In this video, we are going to talk about multiplying polynomials. And a polynomial could be uh, one term, like a monomial, or two terms, which is a binomial. Let's just put up a couple examples of that. So um, a monomial, one term, is something like uh, x, 3x squared, uh, 6x to the second times y, something like that. That's a monomial. 2, that's a monomial. There's no pluses or minuses in here. It's just uh, multiplying a bunch of factors together. That's a monomial. A binomial is the sum or difference of two monomials. So we're going to have two terms. So we could take any two of these and add them or subtract them, like say uh, x minus 3x squared, something like that. Or um, I'll make up a different term, say 6xy minus 4, that's a binomial, or 3x minus 4y, something like that, where these two terms are not, not like terms, and so it can't be simplified. Uh, a trinomial then would be three terms. And we could have something like uh, 3x squared plus 4x plus 1 or something like that. If it's more than three terms, we usually just call it a polynomial. Um, although, polynomial, although these are all uh, types of polynomials. A polynomial of one term is a monomial. A polynomial of two terms is a binomial. A polynomial of three terms is a trinomial. And then if we get something like... 6x to the 4th minus 3x to the 3rd plus 7x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. We don't have a special name for it. We just call it a polynomial. So what we want to do here is talk about how we would multiply any of these two things together. Like how would we multiply oh, x minus 3x squared? Say we wanted to multiply that times this. What would we get? And when we're adding, we're just combining like terms. When we're subtracting, we're basically combining like terms. Multiplying is a little bit different. And I have a very special property up here, the distributive property. And this is the bread and butter of multiplying polynomials. This is basically what you're going to use. Now, you've probably already used the distributive property to multiply a monomial times any of these other things. Let's look at an example of that really quickly. So let's say we take a monomial like um, 3x squared and we want to multiply that by a trinomial 4x squared plus 6x minus 2. Well we're going to use the distributive property. The a in this case is the 3x squared. All right, And we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by each term. Now, generally, the distributive property just has the two terms inside the parentheses, but this could be extended to as many terms as you want. You're going to take what's on the outside here, this in this case a monomial, and multiply it by each term inside the parentheses. As a matter of fact, sometimes you'll see little arrows like this. Multiply a times b, multiply a times c. So in our case, we're going to take 3x squared, that's the entire a value, and we're going to multiply it by 4x squared. Then we're going to take 3x squared and multiply it by 6x. And then we're going to take 3x squared and multiply it by 2. So we would get 12x to the fourth. X, time, x squared is x times x. Times x times x. That's x to the fourth. I'm adding these exponents. I'm not multiplying those exponents, even though in that case it's the same thing. But you'll really see here, all right, this is x to the first. So I add the exponents. Oops, I wrote 6. I don't want that. Let's multiply the 3 times the 6. 3 times 6 is 18. x squared times x. x squared is x times x times another x is x to the third. So you're adding the exponents. Minus 3 times 2 is 6 and just x squared because there's no x terms to multiply it by. Now we have a trinomial for our answer. And none of these three terms are like terms, so we can't simplify it. Boom, that's the answer. All right, so a monomial times anything 
a monomial times um, you know a trinomial a binomial or any polynomial is just going to be a matter of taking that monomial and distributing it and multiplying it by however many terms are inside this polynomial all right but what if we have say uh, a binomial times a binomial how are we going to do that let's see i made this difficult to erase so let's take an uh, easy binomial like oh how about 3x plus 2 and we're going to multiply that binomial by 4x plus 7. So we have a binomial times a binomial. So in this case, the, what we're going to distribute here is this 3x plus 2. We have to take the 3x plus 2 times the 4x and the 3x plus 2 times the 7. Now if we take the 3x plus 2 times the 4x, we're really taking a binomial times a monomial, so we're going to have to multiply the 4x by each of these terms. So a, a really an easier way to think about it is just to take the first term here, and you're going to multiply that by the first term in the binomial, the second binomial, and then you're going to take your 3x, and you're going to multiply it by the second term. Then you're going to take your 2, and you're going to multiply it by the 4x, and take your 2, and multiply it by the 7. You have to multiply all the different combinations of the monomials from the first set of parentheses into the second set of parentheses. All right, so 3x times 4x, that's 12x squared. 3x times 7, that's 21x. 2 times 4x, that's 8x. And notice I'm putting, it's a positive 8x, so I'm writing plus 8x. We'll put some with negatives and minuses here in a minute. So I have positive 2 times positive 7. For my last term, that's positive 14, so I write plus 14. Now notice here I have four terms. My four terms are 12x squared, 21x, 8x, and 14. And the 21x and the 8x are like terms, so we have to add those together, and that would give us 29x. We'll just bring the x squared term down and bring the constant term down that doesn't have any variables and we have our answer okay so it's like a bunch of little distributing there why don't you try one let's try um, one with a minus in it and see what happens how about uh, 6y minus 4 times 5y plus 1 so why don't you pause the video and give that a try and then restart it when you're done. All right, so hopefully you took the 6y and multiplied it by the 5y, and that would give you 30y squared. Then you take the 6y and you multiply that by the other term, which is 1. So 6y times a positive 1, that's a positive 6y. Now, when I go to the 4, that's got a minus in front of it. So I, it's really like plus a negative 4. I want to think of this as a negative 4. So negative 4 times a positive 5y, that would be a negative 20y. So I'm going to write minus 20y. Now, you could write plus a negative 20y if you want. That's the same thing. All right, and lastly, we have negative 4 times a positive 1. So again, a negative times a positive is a negative, so we're going to get minus 4. Or like I said, you could write plus a negative 4 if you want. To me, that's a little sloppy, and usually if we have plus a negative, we just write that as a minus because it is equivalent. We can do that. All right, again, we've got some like terms here. We've got the 6y minus 20y. We can combine those together. You can only combine a y squared term with another y squared term, and we don't have one, so we'll just bring the 30y squared down. 6 take away 20 is negative 14, so I'm going to write minus 14y, and then just bring down the minus 4, and we get our answer. All right, so this binomial times a binomial business is going to come up a lot, and later on, um, you're most likely going to be asked to undo this process we just did, which is more difficult. 
In other words, you're, you're going to be given this answer, this 30y squared minus 14y minus 4, and asked to figure out what two binomials multiply together to give this. That's a little more difficult, and being uh, proficient at multiplying binomials is the key to being successful at going backwards. And that process of going backwards, which is not covered in this video, is called uh, factoring. So you're asked to factor the trinomial and tell me what two binomials multiplied together to give it. But like I said, I'm just giving you a heads up because this is important to know how to multiply these binomials together. It's not going away. You're going to use it a lot for this factoring business later on, most likely. All right, if you continue on in algebra, you will definitely have to factor. So this multiplying of binomials, like I said, is, is pretty important. And um, we've come up with a little way to remember how to multiply these together. I guess you call it an acronym. And that acronym is FOIL. So let's write that down over here. Okay, so you're going to use this when you take a binomial times a binomial. Binomial times a binomial. FOIL. F-O-I-L. What does that stand for? Well, the F stands for first. And what that means is you're multiplying the first terms in each parenthesis together. So up here in this blue example, we did 3x times 4x. 3x was the first term in this parenthesis. 4x was the first term in this parenthesis. So this little arrow is like multiplying the two first terms together. And 12x squared is the result of multiplying the two first terms together. The O stands for outside. And here, is that going to fit? We're multiplying the two outside terms together. So 3x and 7, those are like the terms on the outside here. 3x times 7, outside. And the result of that was 21x. I, can you take a guess? Inside. So the two inside terms are 2 and 4x. And the result of that is 8x and L is last. The last two terms in each parentheses is two, are 2 and four, uh, 7. And this arrow represents multiplying the last two terms. The result of that was 14. So when you take a binomial times a binomial, you're going to get four terms. And those are the result of multiplying the first two terms, the outside terms, the inside terms, and the last two terms. Therefore, called FOIL. If you ever hear an instructor or a friend say, well, just FOIL them, this is what they're talking about. We're really using the distributive property here, but it's a shortcut name. All right, we did the same thing over here, right? 6y times 5y, that was the first, and we got 30y squared. 6y times 1, those are the outside terms, and we got 6y. Negative 4 times 5, those are the inside terms, and we got negative 20y. And negative 4 times 1, those were the last terms, and we got negative 4. And then you need to see if you can combine like terms, all right? In, in the two examples I've done, there were like terms to combine. It won't always be that way. It'll be that way a lot of the time, but not always. Um, I could show you an example where it won't be. But um, if you can combine like terms, then you need to do that and simplify for your final answer. All right, let me show you one where you wouldn't have to combine like terms. I'd have to put some different variables in there. Let's see. What if we did something like, oh, how about 3x minus 4 times 2y minus 9? All right, if you want to pause the video and try this, that would be a good idea. All right, so our first is... We're going to do first, outside, inside, last. Our first term, 3x times 2y is 6xy. Our outside is 3x times a negative 9. So that's going to be a negative 27x. Our inside is negative 4 times a positive 2y. So that's negative 8y. And our last is negative 4 times negative 9. That's a positive. Oops, didn't switch colors. That's a positive. A negative times a negative is a positive 18. 
All right, so let's look at our four terms. We have an xy term, an x term, a y term, and a constant term. So those are all different. We can't add those together. We can't combine any of those like terms. So that's my final answer. All right, so a binomial times a binomial. This is how you multiply those together. And um, just remember FOIL for a binomial times a binomial.